Good afternoon, everyone. All right, so uh, I went over a full list of announcements uh, this morning, so I won't do that uh, today. I'll just give you some updates. Um, got a text from Carmen Morrison, uh, Car Todd Morrison. Uh, he asked for us to pray for uh, Carmen Morrison's cousin, Jordan Garcia, who will undergo an emergency procedure dealing with stomach issues. In addition, Jordan's daughter, Erica, the one going in for the emergency procedure, also on Tuesday uh, will have an emergency procedure for an extremely aggressive throat cancer uh, that has returned. So because Jordan is going in the hospital and then his daughter is going into the hospital, they cannot go in for the, uh, be together for the doctor's appointment this week. So they're asking for prayers. Um, you know, of course, I said something about Sherry uh, Fountain. We were looking for her to be released last night. She was actually released today. Uh, and she is now at home and uh, she will be on a lazy boy. Uh, hopefully they'll get her settled. Uh, Brian Baker sends his thank you to everyone for the visits, the dinners, the encouragements, the prayers, the phone calls. Uh, he just really appreciates the love from this church family and wants all of you to know that. Um, also on the announcements, um, three-year-old Jaleel, uh, who had, was a kidney recipient, and diagnosed with stage one cancer is now EBV free and uh, his kidneys are doing better. And again, I, I'm sorry, I, I like to think that that's the prayers from the, this body of Christ. We, we do a lot of praying and we pray for a lot of folks. And, and let me tell you, the Lord is good to us. And uh, here's our prayers. And uh, Susan Little, Betty Ernst's cousin, who uh, had the fungus in their lungs uh, that we've been praying for for some time is now well and is doing great. And then Sister uh, 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 Betty Ernst also, her friend, uh, grandson Austin, who's been on our prayer list, who was in critical condition after an accident, is now at home and in rehab, uh, doing rehab. So a lot of good things happening, a lot of good things happening. Tonight, after today's message, we will have the uh, graduation ceremony and reception uh, to honor our graduates. And you've seen their pictures out there on the board. We pray everyone will stay around and help us honor these uh, graduates who uh, deserve it. Uh, from our Christian family, uh, now that they've completed uh, the things that they have done. Again, I uh, commented on the prison ministry. If you have not had an opportunity, but you're interested in helping with the prison ministry for the women uh, and for the men, please see uh, Veronica or, or Robin Smith for the women's side of that or 
uh, Brother David Lassiter for the men's side, or mix it up if you want to. But if you're interested, let them know, uh, because that is an excellent work, and uh, we need to stay involved. Good presentation this morning on Lads the Leaders, uh, and more to uh, follow. We'll hear a little bit more about it uh, this afternoon. So uh, with that, we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this, this second opportunity we have today to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we're so thankful that you sent your son Jesus and that he was willing to die for us upon a cross and shed his blood that the church may be established and purchased and that we might be reconciled to you. Father, we do pray that your church, church will continue to grow here. Uh, both in this locality and throughout the world, but especially we pray your blessings upon the work going on here at the Chesapeake Church of Christ, and even this program, the Lads to Leaders, that find a good fit for us that will make this work well and bring honor and glory to your holy name. Father, we're so thankful for all the blessings you bestow upon us every day, and we're especially mindful now, Father, of those that are dealing with health issues we pray your blessings upon the Garcia family, Jordan and his daughter, both going in for surgery. Pray that you'll bless the outcome of both of those. Also, Brother Emmanuel Minu, in his loss of his father, we pray your blessings upon him and his family, that you will comfort them during this tragic time. Pray you'll bless Brother Frazier when he goes in for surgery next coming Friday. We pray that that rotator cuff surgery will be successful and that uh, he will no longer have pain in that arm. Father, we also are mindful of friends of brothers and sisters in Christ that are dealing with issues. Dee Dee Shiver's friend, Bobby, who's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which can be extremely painful. And, and Father, he's got a family and children. We pray your blessings upon him, that you will comfort them during this time. And if he doesn't know you, that he will come to know you before it's eternally too late. And also William Lewis, Betty Ernst's neighbor's son, who's got the two uh, spots on his spine that <clears throat> the doctors <clears throat> aren't sure if they can do the surgery without causing paralysis. We pray that they'll be able to find a way to do this <clears throat> and that he will be able to be cancer-free from this, this ailment. Father, we're so thankful for all your blessings in our lives. We thank you that you continue to watch over us and that you'll continue to bless us. We do ask that you'll be with us through this worship service. We pray that all things will be done decently and in order and well-pleasing in your sight. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity we have to worship you. And we do ask you to forgive us for our sins. And these things we pray to your son, Jesus. Amen. You notice there are no songs on the board tonight. Uh, since we're recognizing our graduates and our young people this evening, I've selected songs from our, from our youth hymnal. We have one that's uh, not part of our book. So everything will be on the slides. So I think we all know these songs. Maybe a couple of them will sing that often, but they're, uh, I think you'll pick it up quickly. I'm sure our young people are familiar with them. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up, and He will lift you up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now I found. I once was lost, but now I found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. there 10,000 years, when we've been there 10,000 years, Christ shining as the sun, Christ shining as the sun. Yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. Now this next song, there's sometimes a clap included. Please don't include the clap in this song. <coughs> I will call upon the song will be uh, in preparation for Lord's Supper. Jesus is Lord, I
By show of hands, would there be anyone here who needs to protect the Lord's Supper tonight? Keep them up. Do you have one of these? If you need one of these, raise your hand. I'm sorry. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Colossians 1. Verses 20 to 22. We come now to another part of our worship services known as communion, where we remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ till he come. The bread by faith is our Lord's body, and the fruit of the vine is his shed blood. We find by example, Acts 20 and verse 7, that this is what the disciples did on the first day of the week. The man and attitude that we use is found in 1 Corinthians 11, and beginning at verse 23 through 31 we read, for I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for the, you. This you do in remembrance of me. Let us now give thanks for the bread. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your most holy, wonderful, and righteous name. Father, we are so thankful that we can come to you as our God again, and thank you for all the things that you do for us, so many of which we take for granted. But Father, we are especially thankful that you sent your son to die, that we might live. Father, we pray now for those, your people, who, will, who are about to partake of this cup, which by faith is your son's broken body. We pray that they'll do so in the manner that's pleasing and acceptance of thee. To thine be the glory of God in Christ's name. Amen. Continuing in verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show or proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause, many are weak and, weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us give thanks now for the cup. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your most holy, wonderful, and righteous name. Father, we are so thankful again that we have been allowed to partake of this cup, which by faith is your son shed blood. We pray, Father, that we had the attitude of gratitude for what you did on Calvary. And we pray, Father, that as we partake of this cup, that one day in the end there will be no cause for serious regret. To thine be the glory, O oh God, in Christ's name. Amen. This concludes the communion service. Now to our collection. This morning I forgot to say the means we have of collecting. There's a basket as you come in that you can leave your offering. You can also mail it in, or we also have an online vehicle that you may do so. That said, Paul said, now concerning the collection for the saints that I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let everyone of you lay by him in the store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. 
Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. Luke 6, and verse 38. Family, that word, good measure, when you think about that, we're really saying that you cannot outgive and outlove God. So this is an opportunity to give back a small portion of what already belongs to him. So as we do this today, please think within yourselves as you give. And now let's give thanks for that privilege. Father, we are so grateful and thankful again for all the things you do for us, knowing how much you love us, knowing, Father, that you've, we've never seen the righteous forsaken and that you will supply all our needs. Father, we thank you now for this privilege, and we pray, Father, that those who give will do so in a matter that is pleasing to thee. To thine be the glory of God in Christ's name. Amen. I'm happy today. I'm happy today, oh yes, I'm happy today in Jesus Christ. I'm happy today because he's taken all my sins away, and that's why I'm happy today. I'm singing today, oh yes, I'm singing today in Jesus Christ. I'm singing today because he's taken all my sins away, and that's why I'm singing today. I'm praying today, oh yes, I'm praying today in Jesus Christ. I'm praying today because he's taken all my sins away. About this song, I don't know how many of us have, know how to sing it as a round, so we can practice that as a round. But please, let's just sing it straight tonight. And uh, Paul, this is the only slide for this song. Love, 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 love the gospel.
Melt my heart and fill my life. Give me one soul today. And this will be the song before our scripture reading and lesson tonight. Let's all stand together and sing the song. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Jesus is risen from the dead. Tonight's scripture reading comes from Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. That's Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the days draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. It's an honor and privilege to be able to be with you tonight, and great singing tonight, great song selection, uh, just a great worship service uh, listening to the singing tonight. And uh, also want to thank you for your many acts of kindness to me the, this weekend. Uh, you're a loving church, you're a giving church, and uh, uh, if I lived anywhere near here, I'd be worshiping with you. And uh, it's great to be here with you, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate uh, this congregation, the opportunity to be here. We had our little program right after church introducing you to some of the things in Lab of Leaders and what do we do next? Well, the great news is certainly we have the support of the eldership and the preacher. We've got a group leader, so 
where things are heading in the right direction. Now you've got to select some of the things that you want to do as a church. But I'll also point out there's a Lads to Leaders rule book, and I, I put it in three ring binder. You don't have to. You download it for free. It's on our website, Lads to Leaders. And the reason I say that, even things like memorizing scripture, guess what? It's got a little chart where you can write down the verses you know. Or if you're leading songs, you can write down when somebody leads a song so you will not forget it. Or Good Samaritan projects like the, the uh, special ceremony for the graduates tonight. And those who worked with it are earning Good Samaritan points. And so there's a ch charts in here to make it easy to keep up with things. And so Lads to Leaders rule book. Study our website. Go there and look. And there's more resources than you, you can imagine there on the Lads to Leaders website. I want to talk about building godly homes tonight. And... Uh, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, the wise man Solomon said, Train up a child the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. Now, that's a proverb. Proverbs are wise sayings. And that's a wise saying from the wise man Solomon. In Bible class uh, this morning, you were studying from the book of Ecclesiastes. I want us to turn to chapter 12, where our lesson text came from uh, uh, just a minute ago. I want us to look carefully at some words here from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, wise words from the wise man Solomon, and then we'll talk about them some. So remember now the creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult, or old King James says, evil days come, and the years draw nigh when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. When the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are not darkened and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and strong men bow down. When the grinders cease because they are few and those that look through the windows grow dim. When the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low. When one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also, they are afraid of heights and the terrors in the way. When the almond tree blooms and the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails... For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. So remember your creator before the silver cord is loosened or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to God who gave it vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Some wise words from the wise man Solomon. Now what was he saying? Remember now thy creator the days that I used before these things happen. And he talks about the aging process that's happening to all of us every day. He mentions, among other things, he mentions here the almond tree blooming. He's talking about your hair turning white. The almond tree blooms white for those of us who have any, okay? And um, I, I know some of you would be have white hair unless was, you had some extra help to try to keep it from being white, okay? But he's talking about the almond tree blooming, your hair turning white or losing hair. That's what happens as we age. He also means, says your grinders becoming few. That's your teeth. I was holding one of my real, little granddaughters in my lap the other day, and she was looking in my mouth and pointing. I said, what's this? What? I said, that's dental work. You know, that, that's what happens when you get older, right? Okay. You go to the dentist and have to have a crown and have to have some work done. Wise man Solomon talks about that right there. He, uh, he also mentions about the sound of music, music and listening to things outside. What happens to your hearing? Your hearing starts going, and you're saying, say again. I didn't get that. Say again, okay? He mentions your eyesight being dim, not being able to see. Well, I just went uh, Friday before I flew out of here to come here. 
to UAB Hospital to have my annual eye exam. I'm borderline glaucoma. I don't have it, but I have to have drops to stay right on the borderline. And he said, you're starting to develop a little cataracts. He said, "Watch. we're going to watch this carefully, okay? What's my point? Your eye doctor may be telling you you cannot drive at night. Your eye doctor may be restricting your activities from time to time. That's what the wise man Psalm was talking about here. He mentions the strong men bowing down. He means your back bending over. And we know what's happening now. We know you're losing calcium as we age. And actually, you will shrink up to one inch as you age, as you're, you're losing calcium in your backbone. And so he's saying the, the strong men start bending over a little bit with age and you got back aches. And then he also says, he says, the keepers of the house shall tremble. That's the hands. You know these hands that can grab that pickle jar and open that pickle jar when nobody else can? And then you see somebody like a, a dear friend of mine I saw last weekend who was an elder in the church for many years and a hard-working man, and I watched him as his hands were shaking and trembling. He was trying to write his name, and his hand was shaking all over the place, and my heart was going out to him. Do you know what that is? That's the aging process. And the wise man Solomon said, it, these are difficult days. These are hurtful pa It is no fun getting old, people. It is no fun. And that's what the wise man Solomon here just said. He says, it's difficult days. These are evil days. These are hurtful days. <coughs> Pardon me. Therefore, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while you can still see to drive at night, while your back has not been over, while you still have your teeth, while you still feel good. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Great message from the wise man Solomon. Imagine this in your mind's eye, if you would. Imagine this little baby is born in this Christian home. He's brought home from the hospital, a little baby boy wrapped in a blue blanket, and they bring him to church for the first time. And we all go up to this baby, and we do baby talk. We do gag, gag, goo, goo. I don't know why we do baby talk to babies, but we do gag, gag, goo, goo to the baby. And the baby's brought to church, and he's in Sunday school, and he's at vacation Bible school, and he grows up at church. And everything is fine till about age 15. And by the age 15, something strange starts happening. Now during the Lord's Supper, when our mind needs to be on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he's sitting here on his phone texting back and forth to his friends, and they're laughing with each other, and he's not paying attention to anything. And then comes age 16. You know what 16 means? Car keys. Do you know where you can go if you have gasoline money? You can go out here and get on the interstate. You can get on 95 and go all the way to Miami. You can go here. You can go there. You can go see all your cousins. You can go see all your relatives. You can go see all the national parks. You can go see everything except church on Sunday. So... Remember now thy creator in the days thy youth. We do a very poor job when it comes to keeping our own, and that's the point of my lesson tonight. A very poor job. There are three indicators that tell us we do a poor job. First of all, statistics tell us that. Of course, you can find all kind of numbers from different people, but I'll tell you some that I use, and I think they're fairly accurate. Most people think so, too, and others have quoted me on them. Right now, we're keeping about, and this is pre-COVID, we're keeping about one-third of our boys and girls faithful to God 10 years after high school graduation They're attending our churches. We're keeping about one-third faithful to God 10 years after high school graduation. They're still attending a church of Christ. That's one-third. Now, what ought to scare us is if they're attending, they're attending with mom and dad. If they attend with only one parent, that number drops to 15. 15%. We're only keeping about 15% who attend with one parent. For some strange reason, they usually take after the parent that they're not going to church with after they get older. And that ought to scare us to death. Now, there are many things you can do to improve that. 
good local programs, uh, working with youth, uh, having uh, Christian education, going to a good Christian school, going to a good Bible camps. There are many things you can do to improve that number. But most people think that uh, about the best you could ever hope for is about 50%. Now think about that. One of the things I like to do sometimes, when I have a lot of times with the last leader's workshop, is say, okay, now have all your boys line up against the wall. Even if you use one of the best options of saying one out of two, do you want to go ahead and pick them right now? Do you want to go line all the kids here from church up and go ahead and pick in and out? Uh, across, and it, it gets people to thinking. Now, I'll point out that last Lear's is no magic pill. There are no guarantees that just because a boy or girl in last Lear's that everything will turn out right. And I would not tell you that at all. But I will tell you the retention rate. For those who have been active, key word is active, just like church. There's a difference between a church member and an active church member, okay? Those who are active in last years for 10 years, the retention rate's over 85%. Now, nothing is 100%. Think about this. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mentored 12 men for three years. One betrayed him. And one denied him and came back, of course, Apostle Peter, okay? But even the Lord Jesus Christ group, you see that it's very hard to deal with everybody. But now let's talk about how this affects the church. Losing our youth affects the church in several ways. It affects the church, uh, first of all, when you realize that because children can open doors that you and I cannot open. And when we lose those, we lose that advantage. What do I mean by that? A child can invite somebody to church. A child can say, come on and come to church with me. Their innocence, their kindness. Jesus says, suffer little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven, the innocence and kindness of children. My father-in-law was not a member of the Lord's church. Uh, my family have been for several generations. My wife's family's uh, relatives were Franklin Camp, a famous gospel preacher in years past. And uh, But the exception to the rule was her dad, my father-in-law. He was a long-haul truck driver. And being a typical long-haul truck driver, he had his big belt buckle, he had his boots. And uh, he, uh, he said, Sunday, uh, he's going fishing or he's going hunting. And that's what he did on Sunday when he's home. He's going fishing, going hunting. He said, church is important. He sent the wife and the kids. He sent my mother-in-law and, boy, he ended up being my wife to church. He made sure they went to church because, you know, women need church, okay? Send them women to church, and he went out and did the man stuff. You understand what I'm talking about? He went out and did the man stuff. By the way, church, he was the number one financial contributor at the Hollins Church of Christ. Not a Christian, Never came, sent the money, sent the family, but he was being the man side, okay. Well, when we moved back from Pennsylvania to Alabama, one of our uh, goals was to try to reach my father-in-law. And I started trying to talk to him about the Bible, and no, it wouldn't go anywhere. I started inviting him to church. It wouldn't go anywhere. Real quickly, he explained to me that you're the son-in-law. And he used that like a dirty word, okay? You're the, the son-in-law. So he wasn't listening to his son-in-law, okay? Well, I turned to my youngest son, Bradley, who was high about this high now. And I said, Bradley, would you help me with Papa? We got to get Papa to come to church. Bradley would pick up the phone on Sunday morning and say, Papa, would you come and sit with me at church today? Well, really, I'm planning on going fishing. There's a bass tournament, and I'm planning on going fishing. Well, Papa, if you'll sit with me at church today, I'll go fishing with you this afternoon. Papa started coming to church. It wasn't a personal work program. It wasn't any tracks in the track rack. You see what happens? I want to tell you something. A little child can lead many people. Their innocence, their kindness, they can say, come on, Papa, come on, Mama, come on, come on, come on. And others start following them. Children can open doors that you and I cannot open. Secondly, they have many years of service they give to God. Now, I know there's sometimes there's leukemia, there are accidents that happen, but generally speaking, look at these young people we have here. What do they have ahead of them? Uh, 75 years, 80 years, 100 years possibly of life they have ahead of them. So look at what the opportunities they have. Now, every soul is important. 
We need to teach the gospel in the nursing homes. We need to teach the gospel in the retirement homes. But I want to tell you something, being perfectly honest, you're not going to find your next song leaders and your next Bible school teachers and your next elders in the nursing home. You're not going to find them there. Now, they need to be taught the gospel. They need to be converted. But you're not going to find your church leaders in those places. They're in those young peoples where they are. And you lose them, you've lost your future. And that's why it's so important. It's so important. I uh, was talking to a preacher friend of mine in Tennessee who went and did a gospel meeting pre-COVID. And... Uh, I was asking him about the responses he had, uh, responses to the gospel. And uh, he said that uh, he had three restorations, and uh, he, said he, had, uh, he said he had two and a half baptisms. And I said, what? How do you have two and a half? He said, well, I baptized two young people, and I baptized a guy 70 years old, and I figured he didn't have much left, so I didn't count that totally. Now, I know he was trying to be funny, but there's a little bit of truth to that. And by the way, with my age, it gets become more and more serious to all of us. Do you get the point? Now, the gospel's for all. But if you're talking about leading the church, you better be thinking about the young people for the future. And as I travel and go many places, uh, it's scary to see there are many churches who have absolutely zero, nobody under 50. Nobody. That should scare us to death. And thirdly, it affects the whole church because we say they're the church of tomorrow. That's true, but they're also the church of today. And we had better prepare them for many of the issues that are coming down the road. We thought years ago that we dealt with the instrumental uh, uh, issue many years ago and thought that was settled. We thought we dealt with many of the issues about women's role in the church years and years ago. There are many of those things, but they keep rising up out of the grave again. And we had better be preparing our young people to deal with these things because they're going to get head on, hit head on by those things. Now, when it comes to developing our youth, too, I see there are two main issues that we've got to deal with, and that's what we'll talk about here now some, too. And they are, number one, the instruction. We've got to make sure that we're giving good instructional material, and, I, and God bless you for your tracks you have in the track rack, for your Bible classes, for what you're doing. But many times that instruction is not going on. I, uh, a great example of this relates to Bible class and, and importance of Bible class. It was one place, I would not name where, but a place where somebody happened to say, well, we don't have anybody to teach the little ones this morning. Just go out in the audience and grab somebody and take them back here and let them teach the little ones because it doesn't matter what you teach them, just keep them quiet. Now, on the other hand, in the adult class, they better be a Bible graduate. They better know Greek and Hebrew, and they really need a Ph.D. beside their name because when you're teaching 70-year-old people, you need to really teach them hard because they're going to start doing crack and shacking up with each other. But it doesn't matter who teaches the little kids back here. Just grab somebody out of the audience and let them go back there and keep them quiet somewhere. Do we have the world upside down? Are we putting the emphasis on the wrong end? And that's what causes the problem. Now, inconsistencies. We could talk all night about inconsistencies, but you've got a graduation party, okay? So we'll just touch on a few inconsistencies. An inconsistency is when I preach one way and live another, or when you talk one way and live another. Somebody said a teenager can spot a hypocrite a mile away. Well, that's an exaggeration. But they're really not paying a whole lot of attention to what you say. They're watching what you do. And what you do speaks so much louder than what you say. And that's what they're paying attention to, our inconsistencies. Let's talk about a few of them, about three. 
We're inconsistent many times when it comes to worship. Now, I know I'm talking to the Sunday night crowd, and God bless you for being here. We've got a great Sunday night crowd here, too. We know Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the symbol of saints like as a custom of some is. We know Acts chapter 20, verse 7, they came together on the first day of the week to break bread, and we've just come together on the first day of the week to break bread. We know the importance of coming together, and the word church, ecclesia, means the gathering. That's what it means. It means the gathering. And I don't know how it happened or what happened, but isn't it so shameful that this thing right here has become divisive to us? And I say that because I know of two churches I know of who split over this thing right here. They actually split over this. And I'm conscious, and, I'm, and nobody really knows the ins and outs, and probably 10 years from now before we all know what the health, good and bad, and the reasons are and such like. But still, isn't it great to get the church back together again? Isn't it great for us to worship together? And I'm thankful we have live streaming. It's a great help for people in foreign areas. It's help for people that are homebound. There are a lot of advantages to that, but there's also great advantages to come together and fellowshipping together and being together. I remember growing up uh, in Alabama, and uh, I remember getting ready uh, one Sunday morning when I looked out the window. I was a little child, and I looked out the window, and it snowed. Now, let me explain snow in Alabama. Some of you from, know, know from Troy, Alabama, you understand snow in Alabama, okay? Uh, it's different than snow here. By the way, you have an average about five inches here, and uh, then you go further north. When I lived in Pennsylvania, I found out snow came in inches. I didn't know that. And then I found out it came in feet. And my neighbor said, you need to shovel the driveway. I said, it will melt. Well, it did in March, okay? And, and I didn't understand that living there because snow to us means a few flakes, okay? And when we have a few flakes, we close the schools, we shut down all the businesses. It's a holiday. It's a new holiday that's been given to us if a few flakes of snow fall. And that's exactly how it works. Well, one Sunday morning, I looked out the window and saw it snowed a little bit. And my, my dad comes in and says, do you have your church clothes on? Are you dressed up to go to church? Got your church clothes on? I said, Dad, it snowed. He said, where? Where? I said, look out the window. On that bush. On that bush right there on them leaves. There's some snowflakes on those leaves. It snowed last night. He said, get your church clothes on. We're going to church. I said, Daddy, the weatherman said we'd be sliding all over town, killing people all the way to church. And the weatherman says that we need to stay home and watch cartoons today. That's his advice for us today. He said, hush, put on your clothes, get in the truck, we're going to church. You know what? Those are memories. Those are memories. Memories are when you go to church, when it's rains so hard, ladies, it doesn't know what your, no matter what your hair do used to be. Your hair's all stuck to your head, and little kids are laughing at you because you got all wet coming in the building. Or it comes a thunderstorm and you're still here at church. Came a hell storm one Wednesday night at our church several years ago. It was real easy to tell who was at church that Wednesday night. All of our cars got dents all on them and windshields knocked out and such because if you were at church when the hell storm, those are memories. But when it was, see, it's so pretty today. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. And there's nothing going on TV and there's no sports in town. I guess I go to church. That's not a memory. What kind of memories are you making for your boys and girls and grand grandchildren? The memories we make of going to church and worshiping Him. We're inconsistent in that area. We're inconsistent when it comes to forgiving, too. To forgiving. When uh, Jesus was uh, giving us a model of prayer, one of the points He was making that He wanted that we ought to ask for our sins, for our debts to be forgiven as we forgive those who sin against us. And forgiving others. The nature of forgiving others. That's something children are very good at, forgiving others. They can be mad in one minute, and what happens in just a few minutes, they forgive. They forgive. We tend to hold grudges. And by the way, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It's not our place to be playing vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But we tend to hold grudges. What you got is a, a man sitting over here on this side of the building is mad at a man sitting over there on that side of the building because this man's grandpappy told him that that man's grandpappy did something to them one time. 
Now, nobody remembers what it was, but so all during church, you keep one eye on that fellow because you can't trust him now. Watch him, watch him while, you, while you're in church. And the woman over here says, anybody all know that woman shouldn't wear that color dress? That looks dress looks so ugly on her, that color dress. And then what? The preacher from Alabama couldn't understand a thing he said, and we sang too many verses of the wonderful songs, and the building wasn't cold enough. It was too hot. We were sweating in here, and this was wrong, and that was wrong. And we get in the car, and what do we do? We get in the car, and we talk about the preacher. Preacher, talk about the elders. We talk about, did you see that man was here today? And we don't like him. Remember, we don't like him. And we talk about all that and sitting in the back seat are our children. And do you know what they're waiting on? They're thinking, when I get these keys, I'm not going there. My mom and daddy said they don't even like the people there. And the only reason I'm going is I'm stuck in this car, okay? So when mom and daddy, quick as I get some keys, you think I'm going there? Remember, the building's too hot, song leader, the preacher, the elders. Nope, we, we don't like anything there, so quick as I get some keys, I'm gone, I'm gone. Be real careful what you say about the church. It's going to come back to get you. The little ears in the back seat are listening. They're listening to everything you say about the church members. And if you don't like the church members, they're going to get away from them. They're listening to you. How important that is. Now, the church is a bride of Christ. Too many times people say, you know, I want God, or I want Jesus, but I don't want the church. The church is a bride of Jesus Christ. Now, you can say what you want to about me, but don't badmouth my wife, okay? Isn't men, isn't that how you feel about that too? Don't badmouth your wives. In my home county, I'm a county commissioner. I'm chairman of the county commission. Nobody calls me to tell me they have a good road in front of their house, okay? Nobody calls me to you know, tell me those kind of things. It's always complain. I'm, I'm used to that. I'm not, it doesn't bother me. But don't complain to my wife because she has nothing to do with it. Be real careful when you're complaining about the church. It, will, it could cost you your soul, but I know this. It will cost you your children. You complain about the church, it will cost you your children. Also, we're inconsistent when it comes to prayer, when it comes to prayer. Pray without ceasing. And what did James say? You have not because you ask not. What did Jesus do in the Garden of Gethsemane? He prayed a prayer that we cannot comprehend as he prayed. And in it, but not my will, but thy will be done. We sing a song in our hymn books, number 485, and I'm not going to lead it. I'm not a song leader as you are, brother. But it's called Sweet Hour of Prayer. We all think about that before we sing it because most people should not sing that song. They'd be lying. When have you ever prayed an hour? Sweet hour of prayer? Maybe three sweet minute or two of prayer. Okay, and we sing that song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. We're inconsistent. You have not because you ask not. Now let's put a ribbon around the lesson. Somebody says, well, I'm just an average Christian family. Well, that means that you'll have about one out of three of your boys and girls faithful to God 10 years after high school graduation. So that means you probably all get busy trying to have some more children, okay, because uh, if you want to have some folks coming to church. Or we do a better job with the ones we have. We do a better job. I appreciate your song selection tonight, too. One of the things I was learning and listening to things that are important as we're trying to grow our youth is that we need to realize the importance of relationships. We also need to realize the importance of trying to relate to them and things. And no, we do not need to change worship. Where the worship needs to be godly worship. We do not need to have a band. We do not need to have praise teams. We do not need to have any of that. But having songs that relate to them is a great example of ways that we can reach the youth and be scriptural in doing so. Also, relationships, and this is one of the reasons that Last Leaders is designed to involve the adults as well as the youth. They need to build relationships with others. 
when you hear why many people say they leave and go to community churches and other places, they say because the relationship is there. We just, we do so much together. And a great thing you're doing tonight, celebrating the graduates, coming together and working together. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that we're doing everything in our possible, possible with our means to reach and keep our youth. But at the same time, remember, there are those who may wander away, but prodigals can come home. Read the Bible. Prodigals can come home. And we need to be like the loving father there, reaching out to those we've lost to bring them back home. We want to summarize the lesson tonight and offer an invitation. It may be that hopefully some things I've said might cause you to think. I want to ask you something about what kind of memories are you making for your boys and girls and for others here at church. I have a memory I'll share with you in closing. And this was a gospel meeting in Alabama when I was a youth, young person. And so you're in a country church in Alabama that does not have air conditioning, okay? So picture it. And you're sitting in pews that are not padded, okay? You understand the old country church. Gospel meeting going on. And by the way, those gospel meetings were one in, one in two weeks back then. And, and God bless you for still having a gospel meeting. So few people even hold a gospel meeting now. And uh, I remember the preacher preached and did an excellent job, and many people responded. Matter of fact, the front row filled up and the second row filled up with people responding that night. I was a little kid sitting in the back. And one of those people that responded was my dad. Now, he already was a New Testament Christian. He already was. But I remember, matter of fact, he was already serving as an elder in the local church there. I remember what my dad said to the audience when he stood up to say something. He said, I need the church to pray for me because I'm not doing a good job as a church leader. I, can, I don't have much education, and I'm doing the best I can trying to study, and I need y'all to pray for me. And he cried. I was a little boy. I'll carry that to my grave remembering that. What kind of memories are you making for people who are looking at you? If you're subject in any way to the imitation of the gospel, will you come as we stand and as we sing? Sister Didi Shiva have responded to the the invitation. She's um, she's acknowledging that she's uh, as she listened to the, the message tonight that she realized there's errors in her life that she had fallen short in regard to with the sermon, and she had um, that she had repented of those things. She asked for our, for our prayers and also for the prayer for uh, for her family as she continued to uh, live this Christian life and, and striving to uh, be the best example that she can. So this time, let us go to God in prayer. Oh. 
Kelly's coming to what? Second hit. Uh, Kelly Kidd has also responded, and you know she's going to uh, to a lot in her transition uh, here and the situation with uh, uh, also with her son Michael. Um, and she's a fairly new convert, and she's uh, desiring to uh, live a spiritual life and be a, a godly example uh, for her son, and even among her uh, family, her aunt that she's staying with, and just want to be a good example for them. So I definitely want to keep Kelly in our, our, our prayers as well. And so at this time, let us go to God on behalf of. Um, of uh, Sister Shriver and uh, Sister Kelly this time. Let us pray. Father, so thankful for your mercy and your grace for your word, Father, that you said is sharper than any two-edged sword. We thankful for the times that we hear things that would uh, would convict us, that would cause us to uh, see the, our shortfalls in our lives for the purpose of improving, Father, and for the purpose of having our families uh, in the church here surround us and to encourage us to uh, to help us to in our in our Christian walk and those areas that we need encouragement with. We just so thankful, Father, for the response of our sisters tonight. We come on behalf of our sister Shriver again. You just pray to just be with her and forgive her of the sin that she has committed and help her, Father, to be more resolved and help her to be the example in in a mom and a wife and that you desire for her to be and for she desires for in order to bring glory to your name as well. Bless the Shriver family and all that they strive to, to, to do for you. Can you mindful of uh, Danica and her issues that with her back, can you be with her and and also pray for uh, Brianna and you just pray that um, she would return back to the body before it's too late as well and continue to be at the Shriver, they continue to encourage her and help us to reach out to her as well. We come also proud of, Father on behalf of our sister kid, we pray that you would just be with her and be with her in a young Christian life and just to things that she uh, are concerned about, to help her to uh, be patient with herself and continue to do the things that she's doing in terms of just involvement and being here and exposing herself uh, uh, to your word that uh, she may be able to uh, grow thereby, help her to continue to be, uh, not to, uh, to continue to come to services that she may be encouraged, that we may be able to encourage her and help us also to reach out for her. We, we uh, continue to, uh, ask your blessing upon her and her job search and other things that she's trying to do in, in order to uh, be able to provide for her her and, and Michael. And we pray that you just bless them. We pray that you be with Michael. He's away in uh, South Carolina with his brother this time. And uh, we just pray that things will work in a way that when you're ready to return, that uh, Kelly will have uh, things in her life in a way that uh, uh, she'll be able to provide for him as well. I forgive her the things that she feel that she has done wrong. and. Strengthen her in areas of that life she may be weak and help us to be an encouragement, source of encouragement for her as well. Father, from time to time we all sin and do those things that are contrary to your will. We all can find ourselves in the lesson tonight, perhaps areas in our lives that uh, there can be some improvement. 
help us to, to realize, Father, that the biggest room in any house is the room for improvement and help us to recognize that all of us stand in need and we all fall short. Strengthen us as we strive to do your will. Build us up as we strive to encourage one another and to edify the body of Christ here and bring glory and honor to your name. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his example. Thank you for his sacrifice. In his name we pray it all thanksgiving. Uh, amen. At this time, let us stand for a dismissal of prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are glad tonight to have had the opportunity to come together and to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth and to be able to fellowship and hear another portion of your word broken into our hearing and to be encouraged and to be uplifted as pilgrims upon this earth en route to heaven. We thank you most of all for Jesus who gave his life on Calvary's cross and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. We pray your blessings tonight upon our two sisters who are grieving tonight and, and whatever it is, a problem that is in their life, we pray that we might do all we can to help encourage them to be uplifted, to be edified and encouraged. Thank you to God for all the things that you give us that we often take for granted and fail to give you thanks. We thank you most for Jesus and the church that he died for. We ask that you be with us as we go from this place, whether we go separately or together. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to uh, encourage our sisters, to, uh, and then we want to uh, just uh, move to the fellowship hall so we can have the, uh, the ceremony for our graduating uh, senior. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.